So uh, with all of that, um, I, again, just a reminder, please shut off your mute and your video. And I'm gonna go ahead and introduce today's speaker. So there we go. Um, so Barry, welcome. Today's speaker is uh, Barry Beter, who is a Cape Cod photographer. And uh, his work has been exhibited uh, in many venues across the Cape, uh, the Falmouth uh, Arts Center, the Katuit Center for the Arts, the Cape Cod Cultural Center, and at uh, uh, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute. Um, so, uh, as well as at, at the Maritime Museum, where his work has been on display for a little more than a year now. So, uh, before we get started, uh, there's a short video we, uh, we'd like to play, which kind of introduces you to Barry's work. So, uh, Liz, behind the scenes, if you can play that video. tell you that Housecapes discovered me. I didn't discover them because I had no plan that day when I was walking my dog past a boat that was sitting on a trailer at basically an abandoned house in the fall. I saw that this boat had a beautiful design and I took a closer look and when I did I realized that it was barnacles and dirt and debris. The locals call it the scum line of a boat and it's the part of the boat that sits on the water and absorbs the chemicals and the compounds and the currents and the flow and it forms a pattern and a shape. And I noticed one day out of nowhere that the shape looks like beautiful art. So much that I took a picture with my iPhone thinking nobody would believe me. That became Hullscapes. So it, it captured me. first one, the hullscape that jumped out at me, the actual design on the boat hull looked exactly like the river where the boat was moored. And I started to notice how often the, the hull lines looked like the environment. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's the funniest thing, but pe I can't convince people that they're looking at the horizontal water line of a boat hull. People think that they're looking at a painting. Very often you'll see very defined seascapes with waves and water and sunsets. And sometimes you'll see landscapes, beautiful forests and woods and mountain outcroppings. It still blows my mind every single time I see it. I can't. That's why I'm so excited about hellscapes because it's an adventure that keeps on going. The best part is I think I'm so tickled and grateful that, that other people see enough in it and appreciate it enough that they're actually wanting to buy it. And the fact that people want to hang these things in their living room is just, I find just such a treat. I'm both humbled by it and grateful that people share my appreciation for what these hulls look like. I think it's wonderful, so that's about it. Barry, tell us a little bit more about your work. Okay, well, I'm gonna tell you and show you as soon as we open this presentation. Just went away, but I'll find it again. Here it is. Okay, well, here we are. And thank you all for uh, being here and participating. And thank you, Mary and Liz. and. Dawn at the Cape Cod Maritime Museum. I hope you can hear me okay. Um, and uh, I also want to thank um, my son and his wife for making that great video, uh, Bedrock Productions, and uh, and uh, all the people who have supported this endeavor and believed in it and um, encouraged it. So um, what you're looking at is the, um, the main hellscape uh, screen, and that's really here to show three particular types of hullscapes we find. Now, hullscapes are just, remember, everything you see will be 
every photograph in this particular show will show you only a boat hull. There's only one picture that I did not take, and that's a NASA picture, and you'll see it later on. Um, okay? Um, I'm very grateful, by the way, to, um, to, to Huey, to Woods Hole, for lending me close enough to the big ships, to the vessels, to the science ships. I carry Strom, thank you for that, and, uh, and I will share all of that with you. Um, the three types of hullscapes that you can see is we've got seascapes and landscapes and more abstract designs. So if we uh, move to the next slide, what you're looking at is I want to take you on a little tour today, a little adventure, maybe a little boating adventure. This is kind of the view of Falmouth from the chart, and it's a view of Falmouth Mass from above. Uh, if you were almost standing at Martha's Vineyard, kind of looking down, Martha's Vineyard is just to the south of where this map is uh, off the bottom of your screen. Um, but on the right, I will show you with my cursor, on your right, on my right where this is, this is where I live. And most of the photos that you will see here today have been taken on this little peninsula. There's plenty of boats in all of these areas. So we're gonna take you in the peninsula, um, Eagle River East, which is over here. My house is just over here. And this is Washburn Island, which is a beautiful reserve and uh, a beautiful bay. Uh, and there are a number of rivers along here. There's a Bowens Pond and there's a Green Pond. And you'll see hulls from those places all the way to Falmouth, oh, all the way to Falmouth Harbor, which is where this arrow is over here. And you'll see some boats from there. And you'll see quite a few boats from this area, which is Woods Hull. And one boat from way south in Martha's Vineyard, which is about six miles away, okay? So that's the way it looks, and uh, that's the map of where we're gonna go and where we're gonna head, okay? I wanted to share with you what I call my first hullscape, and that is um, the answer to the question I'm most asked. And the question is, how did you think about this? What made you think to look to take pictures of hulls and hullscapes? And I really didn't think of it. Uh, there are many things that, that happen to us when we're not thinking and not thinking about it. It just happens to us. Uh, sometimes we see things that we weren't thinking about. Sometimes we see things of beauty. Sometimes we see things of greatness. And we hadn't planned on saying things, but we do see them. And if you're lucky enough to see something out of the ordinary, then um, it's important to recognize that. Um, so this, as I was walking my dog with my first boat hull, that looked to me very strange because as I got close to it, I, it looked to me like somebody had painted the boat hull, that somebody had hired a painter or a stencil uh, of the beaches and the river where we actually live. And if you notice, um, I don't know if you can see what I see, but when I look at the um, grasses here and the white sands and the beaches, I thought for sure that my neighbor John, who lives down the street, had actually hired somebody. And I thought nobody would believe me, so I actually took a photo of it with my um, iPhone. Uh, most of the photos in this presentation are taken with either my iPhone, because I happen to not have my camera with me, or a pretty um, kind of regular Nikon camera, not, a, not an expensive camera and often we'll use a telephoto lens. Often I will be out in my boat, which is a moving thing, whether it's my kayak that you saw in the video or a small boat that I have, and that's moving and rocking. And often the boats I'm taking pictures of are not on trailers, they're on moorings or they're tied to docks, so they're moving too. So we have the problem of two moving objects as you're trying to take a photograph and which leads to too much blurriness. So it's very uh, difficult to keep the kayak still and the boat you're taking a picture of. But I do my best to try to counter the winds. And so that's another question people have is, um, uh, what kind of equipment do you have? Another question is, do you Photoshop all this stuff? And um, the answer is no. So here's an example of a, of a typical hull. This is kind of a, very typical, I see a lot of them. And I don't know what you see when you look at this, um, whether you see waves or clouds or beaches, but um, there's a lot of digital information. And um, I do not use Photoshop and I do not use um, coloring. Um, the only um, post, once I take the picture, the only thing I do is a uh, uh, crop and uh, bring them to a size. And the reason I do that is that, you know, I think that in art, um, and I'm learning about this because I, you know, 
I'm kind of new in the world of, of quote unquote art, but uh, some people tell me that there are two parts to it. Part one is that the, there's an image that you want to communicate and convey, um, an image or a feeling or a mood or an object that uh, you want to convey. But the second part is that you've got to make sure that it's conveyed in a way that is captured by your audience, that is captured by people who are viewing what you've captured. And so part of my cropping is to make sure that I'm trying to maximize the view and trying to maximize the actual picture um, that looks like what I think it looks like. And, you know, people always don't see it the way I do. And hopefully that as you look through this, you will be able to uh, see some things on your own. Kids see lots of things and I see some. This is my, actually, this is my second boat that I took a picture of. And I want to show you something. This is, this is um, a diagram of how it all comes together. Uh, because as much as I tell you that this is a boat hull, if you look at the photographs, um, and then if you look to the top right, that there's a sailboat in my neighbor's yard. And that blue line uh, with a square, uh, dotted square is, is the actual uh, picture. That's what I took. And after cropping, that's what I came out with. Um, and I took that picture only because it looked like a cloud to me um, over the water. And it very much looked like the area where I lived in terms of color and perception. Now, if you take a look at this picture, you, what do you, I wonder what you see in this. Um, I see, if I take my cursor, I saw like a beautiful beach over here, white sand. And to me, this looked like trees and, and kind of a forested area and obviously water from the ocean. So that's what that looked to me when I saw it, um, which answers another question I'm asked a lot, which is, well, what do you do? Do you take pictures randomly and then look on your computer? and hope that you um, find something that may look like something, or do you see it, it before you take the picture? Um, I never take a picture unless I see something, unless I see something that I can recognize that I like. In fact, <clears throat> I start to see things so clearly now that when I'm driving, um, I could be at 40 miles an hour, and if there's a boat hull on the side of a road, I may notice whether there's a scene and I'll jam on my brakes and I'll get out of the car and, and take a picture. So if you look at this and you see the beach, now I wanna show you what it really was. If you look up on the top, you'll see that fire rescue boat. And if you look at the hull of that boat, there's a line where that boat meets the water. That line is what that photograph is. So that photograph is a close up shot of that Falmouth fire boat that was sitting at it's more at dock at Falmouth Harbor. So hullscapes come from usually the water line of the boats. Many of the boats you'll see will be in the water. Some will be outside of the water. Frankly, I prefer them outside of the water because um, uh, they're more stable and easier to photograph. Um, in the water, you've got that rocking issue I, I mentioned before. Um, here's a neighbor's boat that I walked by and I just liked the red in it. And, and, and I like the uh, background, the, it had depth to it. And that's why I took it. I liked the red, I liked what looked to me like it could be a sky, uh, and, um, but it's a lot of red in that and um, great dimension on, on the bottom. So it had some contrast and that's the actual boat. And if you look at the uh, lines on that boat, you see where the red paint meets the black and that's exactly what the picture above is. Now. The picture above is a little different shot. I, you know, usually take 10, 15 pictures and sometimes I'll go back to a boat in different light. You know, that looks like it's got a fairly bright sun, maybe three o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, I'll go different times and because the shadows will change. And in this one, as you can see, I'll show you with my cursor, these are just scratches in the paint and scratches in the hull. And I took that because um, I, to me, they reminded me of uh, celestial objects or moon or sky. And, something like that. So I really like taking pictures like that. Well, all of this kind of coalesced and I started getting more and more pictures. And all of these pictures in the wall are at a place called Coffee Obsession in Falmouth. This is the Falmouth one. They have a store in Woods Hole that, and they're also exhibiting my photos. And the thing about Coffee O, oh, how lucky could I be taking pictures of boat hulls? Uh, because the people who come in for coffee very often are the people who work at Woods Hole Oceanographic, or Marine Biology Lab, or the Institute for Climate Change, or NOAA. 
Um, Woods Hole and Falmouth are just loaded with scientists and professionals who took an interest in these photos once they learned that they were boat hulls. And the funny part is that is that people who don't, I had one fellow, he was a, a scientist, a PhD scientist, a really famous person. He said, I don't like art. I've never liked art and uh, my family doesn't appreciate it because they like art. He said, but this is different. Now, what I learned from talking to many of these people at Cafeo was that, you know, yeah, they're really pretty paintings and that's what some people like, but how does this, how do these hulls start to have these appearances that look like, like reality? Um, sometimes I cannot convince people that it's not a painting. Um, there was an art instructor who complimented me on my strokes. He used French words for the types of strokes and I kept explaining that they're photographs of weathered boat hulls. And he ended up by, uh, I don't think he believed me. He thought I, that I, there were paintings. But if you look at just the paragraph um, that says, what makes hull imagery? There are so many factors that go into um, the palette. This is like a natural made or a God made event because when you look, you've got the pH and the tides and the weather and the water consistency. Um, and the scientists from back at Coffee O and uh, who talked to me about this started to tell me that they think that each river, I showed you the map of all the different rivers with all the different boats. They told me that they thought that each river might be able to provide um, almost like a fingerprint identification as to where the boat is from based on the colors and patterns on the hull. Uh, especially the septic um, flow and the uh, use of sunscreens and even medications that people take uh, that don't dissolve readily in the water and linger for a long time. Our waters are pretty um, colorful and uh, and a lot of what happens in the boathouse come from the consistency of the water which will differ from place to place. Um, there are some people, this paradolia is, you know, some people see faces in, in unusual ways and things and others don't. I don't, I see faces and things sometimes. I don't quite see dead people but I will see um, things in boat halls and I'll see beauty uh, that doesn't exist and um, until you see it. And once you see it, you can you only see it. And uh, I'll explain that later. But there was a woman who came to one of our the exhibitions and she said to me, she said, just I just want you to know that the fact that I was able to see something beautiful and something so ugly as a boat hull, she said, it kind of inspired me to think that maybe there's other beauty out there. Maybe there's more beauty in the world than I know. And maybe I haven't found it yet. And maybe I need to start exploring unusual places uh, to find some more beauty because it exists. And, um, and it's true for all of us that if we take time to look and to be present, uh, there's a good chance we may find some beauty that we just didn't expect. I never expected to find beautiful things in boat halls. Uh, other things that we found in the boat halls is the things that uh, self-similarity, that things will look like in like the environments. And, and there are reasons to think that a hull would look like a beach because the chemicals are similar um, and the flow of the water is similar. So why wouldn't things look? The molecules are similar. Uh, so there are many kind of explanations that I got from the, the scientists that talked to me about things like fractals, the, the phenomenon that exhibits patterns like snowflakes will continue to exhibit pattern after pattern after pattern and the symmetry. So, but you can look that up. I don't want to bore you with that. I mentioned earlier that I got the opportunity to um, spend some time photographing some of the science ships at Hui at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. And, and, I, and I don't think you should try this on your own. I think that's a, um, wouldn't, they wouldn't let you do it. Um, we had to get clearance by uh, security and even the captains of every ship had to give us approval. And Woods Hole itself um, and Carrie Strom, I don't know if you're on the call here, but thank you again for calling me, letting me know when a new boat comes to town and we uh, they dock at Woods Hole and I get to go out on my kayak like you saw in the video and take some pictures. So don't attempt this without permission, but I wanna show you some of the interesting things that I found at Woods Hole. Uh, with some of the Hui ships. Um, what you're looking at. Mary? Uh, yes, Mary. 
I just wanted to jump in here um, and let people know that um, the artwork you're uh, seeing uh, is also for sale. Some of it, um, as you see in this particular slide, is uh, at our museum. Uh, some of it uh, isn't. But uh, if anyone sees an image that uh, you might be interested in purchasing, uh, make a note of the little number at the bottom of the screen and uh, we can put you in touch with Barry. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Um, actually, it's great timing for this because this, this particular, um, this three panel, it's a triptych. Uh, it came from one of the Woods Hole Oceanographic ships. Um, Neil Armstrong had just returned from a mission, a scientific uh, exploration in the Arctic Circle. And I'll show you um, a close up of it soon. But uh, that's a triptych that's hanging now at the Cape Cod Maritime Museum if you want to go check it out yourself. Um, that's a beautiful um, hullscape and it kind of reflects to me the environment of the Arctic. I've never been uh, to Greenland and Iceland, um, but I did talk to a lot of crew members who said it looked very much like that. In fact, there, let me show you the next picture. There is a, um, there was a crew member and he was on uh, his boat with a power washer in hand. And I don't know if you uh, can see the little nozzle and the hose he's got in his hand, but he, uh, he, his job was to wash off what I had as the beautiful um, hellscape. And we had a nice conversation because I was in my kayak about, uh, well, you can see how far I was away from the ship. And he told me that the ship had picked up so much debris and, and it's, Sometimes they'll call it scum, but we try not to use the word, uh, such a negative word, but so much dirt and grime. Actually, the, this part, a cook from the ship thought maybe um, it, some of it could be salt, but the um, um, crew member was uh, getting ready to power wash. And his quote, as you can see from the top, after it all was said and done, he really never thought of um, this as being something worth photographing before. But he ended up by saying, you know what they always say, a clean boat is a happy boat. And, <laughs> and uh, went off power washing. So the power washer is my biggest enemy. When I go walk around neighborhoods, first thing people want to do is remove their, their, their debris. Um, there was so much in this boat that it slowed down their speed on the way back from the Arctic Circle, uh, requiring them to make an unscheduled stop um, to remove it. And uh, they picked up a lot of stuff. Um, why did they get so much debris? Is it from climate change, glacier melt? That's what they're up there studying, um, the impact of the environment on the ships. So, you know, we don't know the answers, but it's interesting to uh, know. Um, this is the kind of stuff you see on the, this is also on the Neil Armstrong ship. And uh, I took this picture only because um, it looked to me like an underwater fanciful um, picture that uh, I thought a kid might like with, or water and underground and maybe some different kinds of fish or rockets, you know, so there, there's a lot of interesting things, maybe some little fish floating around here and grass. Then as I was paddling along, this is back to the Neil Armstrong, I got close enough. And when you look up here, uh, I don't know what you see, whether you see, um, I saw an angel. I saw the outstretched arms of an angel and the, um, and the angel that seemed to be almost like uh, calling out a warning and coming out of what looked to me like uh, fire. Uh, and uh, this was, um, and some people, if you really were, are nautical, you might see it only as an anchor, because obviously it's the ship's anchor. But the more I looked at it, the more I felt that um, I was looking at an angel. Uh, coincidence or not, um, that's what uh, how she looked. Then on the right of her, another boat happened to be not at the same time, but came to Woods Hole. And that was the Atlantis who came to Woods Hole. And wouldn't you know it, there was to me another angel. This one was very, very beautiful uh, and peaceful in the way that she looked. Uh, whereas the, the one on the left from the Neil Armstrong looked a little frantic uh, calling out, whereas the Atlantis ship had come from, the vessel had come from the south and uh, to the Panama Canal and up to Woods Hole that way. And the thing that I noticed most about it, if you follow my cursor, you'll see that her, to me, if this, if you see the angel uh, and you see her robe, uh, I was particularly taken in by this dazzling, this light that 
was dazzling uh, and kind of running off her robes down into the water. Um, and and the sparklies that were all around. So um, to see something that I thought were angels was incredible. And one of my neighbors who I had given this photo to, uh, who was not doing well with COVID and, and a disease and some problems in the family, said that you put it in a kitchen. And the fact that um, she thought it was an angel uh, gave her hope that they were there and they existed. So um, I think it's just amazing to uh, capture and to see them. They stop me when you think that I was in my kayak, like really low. Now here's another hui ship that um, uh, that vessel, a science vessel that was in uh, Woods Hole. And is this a coincidence or what? Um, to me, um, no, the picture on the left is the actual NASA photo. I told you there was there's going to be one photo in the whole presentation that I didn't take. This was a NASA photo. I got it online and it's the Atlantis space shuttle on takeoff. And then if you look to the right at the um, Atlantis science vessel, uh, you see the, uh, to me, I thought, oh my God, look at that. Um, and the weird part of all this is that the space program uh, got its name. They call this shuttle the Atlantis because of the original Atlantis science vessel, vessel, which was one of the first science ships and vessels that was ever, ever uh, equipped and made to explore. And it was the exploration of this ship that led to the naming of this rocket. And for this to be, this is not painted on by the way of stencil. This is just grime and dirt and um, wear and tear on the hull. So um, I find that to be just this is part of what, for me, makes the whole Hallscape experience interesting and exciting because you keep finding these little things. This is another um, photo that I got from the hull of the Huey ship as it floats in water. Um, and this ship, as you can see, when I, I don't know what it looks like to you, but all I could see was I years ago I was hiked the Grand Canyon and um, to me it looked just like um, water running through the Grand Canyon in the sky. I love the skies and the hellscapes and, and the coloration. Um, so this was a beautiful um, hull um, that was really just a, call it a seascape, but it looked like the Grand Canyon to me. Um, now this is another one, uh, another um, vessel that was docked at uh, Woodhull Geographic, and this is the RV Atlantic Explorer, different boat. And if you look at this black line, this um, horizontal line that goes across and there's another one down here i'm going to show you uh, the picture that came out of that which is um this is the um spray from the um ocean um that was it, it was falling off this black um uh, line and coming down on the boat so um it's amazing the kind of things that get captured uh and sometimes just ignored and uh, I will probably say that I love this, but I'm going to say I love many of them because of the designs and shapes. Two more from the Woods Hole group that I liked. Um, um, the one on the right is another fanciful um, picture. It's a photograph. Remember, these are all photographs. And to me, I liked this what looked like kind of a city at night uh, with lights and the sky and then some really wild objects in here. These could be fish um, and floating around on the hull. Um, and it just made, there's just so much going on in here and the streaking light. Um, and that is just the boat sitting in water, as this was as well, on a different Woods Hole ship. Um, and to me, that looked like, you know, for me, it looked like a kind of a bedpost and a tired dancer with her feet and her legs. And some people see alligator head there and, and uh, different things, but it's just something that uh, you just don't usually see. And the digital information that comes off these ships are uh, just uh, so extreme and intense. Uh, one of my favorites again, and this is our only limited edition of all of them um, in, in the whole grouping. And I took this because I was on my boat in a place called Green Pond. That's um, kind of in the middle between, on the map that I showed you, Green Pond is a beautiful spot. Uh, and it's sunset, it's so pretty because the sun's setting and you watch the sunset over Martha's Vineyard. So. This is, I'm in my boat in the water here. So this is a beautiful reflection of the sunset on the water. And this is beginning of the hull. I don't know if you can see it. This is the hull of a sailboat that was moored uh, in the water. 
And the light looked just like the sun setting over Martha's Vineyard to me. So from where I looked, it was just looked like a beautiful seascape. And, um, and it captured the reality of a sunset um, over Martha's Vineyard. Um, so that was a, just beautiful. So let's kind of change gears for a minute because I'd like to look, show you how owls sometimes magically reflect uh, their environment in which they're in. And I'm not even going to try to justify it or explain it. I say, that, but, but based on what I've learned from the science, um, there's reasons to think that boat hulls could look like their environment. Now, the top picture is the hull. This is actually the hull line. You saw this in an earlier photo, but the bottom is where the boat lives. And uh, I kind of look at this as the island where, this is the island where it's across from the river where, where I live and uh, from where this boat sat. And uh, if you look at the, um, just the positioning of how those two come together in terms of colors even, um, let alone how they look. It's just amazing how boats reflect their environment. And here's another one. So if you take a look at this picture of, this is actually my boat when I took it out of the water. This is a boat hull. On the bottom there's all the guck and the grime and um, things that accumulated on my hull. This is, um, and if you notice this on the right here, there's more dirt and, uh, and grime but if you take a look so the bottom is what you just saw that's the hull of my boat and if you look up this is a reality photo this is not a boat hull this is a photo i took of washburn island and this is the mooring spot where my boat sat the entire season at mooring and accumulated this on its hull now if you just look at this piece compare it to this piece of land, even to look at this, the shadowing here, this is actually another peninsula. Um, this is a river that goes up here. This is another peninsula in Falmouth. Um, and down here on my hull, you see these uh, outcroppings that look like, could look like this. And then you've got the grasses and the beach um, that looks out of the water. And so the fact that the, this boat sat here for a season and looked out and somehow, got its hull to look like that is just, I don't know. And believe me, I didn't paint the hull or change it around. It's just the way that it is in reality. Now here's another one. This is the other side of my boat and this is in the sunlight. Now, if you look at my, this is, I took it out of the water. So this is on a trailer now. And if you take a close look, you can see, if you imagine for a minute, if you look, see how I look and you see the water line here and could this be the island? You know, I'm not, could this be that same island that we saw before from a different perspective? And these are some dunes that appear because the trees are uh, um, starting to uh, starting to lose some of the uh, er erosion is causing some of the island to go. But if you look down at the shape of the reality, this is another reality from where the boat sits, just the other direction. And you look at the shape of this particular island as it starts to come down. And this is just hull gunk that, how does that look so much like that island is still beyond me. But uh, those are the things I look for. And it's a wonderful hunt. So when I go out sometimes in my boat or my kayak, I go out, it's an adventure to find things and to explore. And uh, it's always fun. Um, Here's another picture of the same island, you know, it's only because it's local. And I would guess that all throughout Cape Cod, you will find these particular, um, I don't want to say coincidences, but the water consistency or clarity. But this is a fall picture of the uh, island. And this is another, this is a neighbor's hull. Um, this is um, the way it looks and the way it compares. So things are random and they, they happen Every now and again, I mentioned that I um, tend to stop short and put on my brakes quickly when uh, I see a hull. And I was driving by this particular boat, um, it's going about 30, 35 miles an hour and 28 in Falmouth. And this boat was sitting and upon close inspection, uh, it was Easter week. And these are really barnacles, but you know, can we imagine for a moment and think that maybe they're Easter flowers and uh, the fact that it was Easter week was just uh, mind-blowing and, um, and how pretty it can be. 
Um, this is our shot. I don't have the matching boat hull to go with it, but I just liked the, the view, the image. And to me, it reminded me, say, you know, people say, well, what do you see? Or how do you know to take a picture? Once I saw this, it looked to me like I was looking down at a, at a river from very high up, uh, maybe a space station, or very high up in space or sky. And, and it all looks just so beautiful that, uh, and complex and worth taking a picture. Now here's here's another hellscape. This is a neighbor's boat. This was a, a fiberglass boat, 24 foot boat, sitting out of the water on a trailer in my neighbor's yard, and it was starting to crack. It was so old. You can see the cracks, and the coloration was so beautiful. And to me, it looked it looked old. And and then I noticed the dimensionalities. That if you look just over what could be a wall here. And you notice the depth, uh, to me, that looked like it was just going eternally. Then it meets up with the cloud and skies. By the way, this boat was so old, it was deemed to be unseaworthy and thrown out. Um, it was never allowed to go back in the water. So this is kind of an aged vessel. And um, and when you look at the sky and the clouds and all, it pulled it together and made for a really nice picture. And, um, again, so without having to colorize or add anything, uh, nature, and, paint and sky and water you can do a lot of kind of wonderful things um well here, here's just another kind of hull view again i don't want to keep saying it but uh, just take a look it's um you know, it looks like ocean spray to me and that's kind of why i took it and i also like the coloring the green now this is an odd picture that um and i liked it only because of this splash of blue that seems to come out of here and uh or purple and, and and this kind of pattern um, just another hull another day and, um, here's another neighbor's boat two houses up from me it was sitting at a dock and uh, and down here these are these are waves this is the water and I was in my kayak um, it was a very windy day and I had to figure out how to get my kayak to be still long enough to take a picture of the hull and what I was going after were the clouds I looked at the shape of the sky, which is really just, you know, whether it's scratches or old paint, but this being the whole hull, this is hull paint here, and, um, and this looked like some kind of weird thing, like a mountain or whatever it could look like, but I really liked the design of what could have been a, a sky. And, uh, so um, these kind of things, they grabbed me. So with the wind and the current, in order to get the kayak stopped, I had to face my kayak into the wind, paddle as hard as I could, because I had to put down the paddle and pick up my camera. And in time you do that, you can be blown away from the ship. So I uh, ended up paddling as hard as I could, waiting for the wind to stop me and for the current to stop me. And there's a moment in time when you're fully stopped by the elements, and that's the time to take the picture. So you've got to prepare for that. And it's, it's always fun to uh, be out and trying to capture the best picture. Now I took this one because Basically, to me, all I could see was this, is a sailboat and uh, on the blue-green water. And, uh, you know, so that's just another example of the kind of things you might see if you're looking. Why would there be a sailboat? Now, this one I just wish were clear as a, as a photograph because uh, there is a spot not far from my house where you come down the water and you head to this barrier beach and you go through an opening here and it leads you out into the ocean and uh, it was a beautiful day and this this is a boat as you probably can figure out already and to me this is like, like a flock of migrating ducks or geese who are heading south and maybe a few boats at the shoreline and um, the boat was rocking and rolling so much that it was hard to get a clearer picture but some people have told me that blurry is good, that they like a little bit of abstract blur because it adds some things to the, uh, um, makes it makes it different and interesting. Here's another one that I really like because it looked like the cliffs. I have a friend uh, who lives uh, near Newport in Narragansett and they have cliffs just like this along the edge of what is a beautiful beach. And, uh, and so I was really interested in, uh, in grabbing and seeing if I could capture that whole scene um, again being just another boat hull this one i liked because i thought kids would like it and i liked it 
uh, because there's so much going on. And this is just a hull that had, these could be, um, uh, these shapes could be fractals. And when I showed this to a friend of mine who uh, works, who worked for Noah, um, he kind of looked at it and he told me that he felt that the shape, especially this bottom shape with a fin, looked like a right whale. This whole bottom to him uh, looked so much like a right whale. And I hadn't even thought about looking like a right whale. Uh, but when you look at it, you can almost you can almost see it. Um, I liked also these fanciful little uh, horse-shaped uh, things, and and thought that you know kids could make great stories out of visiting a place like this. Like deep down in here, perhaps there's some uh, like some inner space stuff going on. It's just it's just so much information here that you know you get writing stories about it. Now I will admit something to you here. First of all, <clears throat> whether or not you see a spaceship is a question flying in over high trees uh, with a lot of things getting blown around and maybe a road down here in the bottom right um, as a spaceship flies into from the woods. This is was not a boat hull. This is the only non-boat hull other than that Atlantis, Atlantis rocket. This was the underside of a mooring ball. So this whole design was made by the tides moving in and out pulling against the mooring ball so it is close in that it contains the water consistency and the flow and the chemical nature of, of the river um, but i just love the the colors and the, and the imagery especially the, the road on the bottom um, another i can say another neighbor's boat but it's endless uh, how many um, neighbors have great hellscapes um, and sometimes they have to argue with them because they're getting ready to blow them off with their power washer and clean them off. And to me, this looked like a, a shark's mouth with a, an eye. And uh, uh, so I took that just for posterity, just to hang on to it. Well, the fanciful hull and in the background, it looked to me like, like Oz. It felt like I was in the Wizard of Oz with uh, beautiful um, trails with roads leading to it and uh, below some fanciful mountains of water. Now, this one is a sailboat. My friend was refinishing a uh, sailboat to live some in East Falmouth, and, uh, and, and I noticed the birds. This is why I took the picture. It was, uh, these would look like seagulls to me, or birds, flying birds, very fanciful, over a kind of a swamp. And this figure on the right being, uh, looked to me like a, one of those characters that you see in uh, Lord of the Rings, you know, and the trees all decided to get up and move around. Um, so, um, if, uh, you can say I have a uh, strong imagination or you could uh, wonder um, how this sailboat ended up looking so much like um, kind of a, a swamp scene that's really beautiful. Um, this is another version of that, I remember I told you a few slides back about the boat that got uh, thrown out. It was no longer seaworthy. Uh, this is another part of the hull. And, one of the things I liked about this one is it was kind of archaeologic looking to me in that the top of this wall looks like it had depth with these characters or trees that kind of moved off into the distance. And these lines that uh, just were so interesting and intriguing the way they the way they flowed. Um, I really liked the, this boat that passed on. Uh, so let's change subjects a little bit and talk about hulls and where hellscapes were born, uh, in a sense. Um, this, this is a very complicated um, photo for me because, as you can see, first of all, I took this photo the day that uh, our former president, Donald Trump, uh, marched um, in Washington, D.C. through the protesters, um, tear gas from protesters with William Barr and the... Uh, um, he went to the church and we held up the Bible, that famous moment. Uh, I was sure that um, there was going to be uh, military um, death uh, from uh, the protesters and the military, which is what they, and they were already um, hitting people with various kinds of gas. It was a very disturbing scene. And so I turned off my TV and went for a walk. And when I went for the walk, I two houses, three houses up, I saw my friend Jack's boat and um, noticed this um, on his hull. 
And this is his hollow. As you can see, this is a, this is grass. This is a trailer. He sits on a trailer. And this to me looked like our island. This being the water that goes across. You know now that the island is about 700 yards across from me. And um, and this to me, it looked like the end of the world scenario to me, like the apocalypse. Um, maybe with a grain of hope here, but and then I noticed this character here. It looked like it could have been a character from a novel, like a. Some, with a robe on, holding a staff, and and looking out over the gloom and doom of the world. So, this photo I took specifically because um, it was a terrible day, and uh, in my life and in our lives, and uh, I wanted to capture it. And uh, it just looked to me like the end of the world. The island was on fire, and this is the boat. That's how it looked when I was uh, out for my walk that day. Um, as you can see here, here's the same view of the island on fire, and. Um, and again, as you look back on it, that's uh, that's the close-up. So again, paying attention, taking a close look, seeing how things look. Um, this was my second hellscape, actually, and this um, um, it was so kind of abstract, so uh, I don't know, abstract to me, and it looked like a beautiful landscape. And it came from this boat. So uh, if you take a look at the way the grit and the, the, the browns and the grays come together, uh, a section of that came to look like, and this is what uh, somebody thought was a beautiful painting, and um, uh, and um, that I had painting strokes, and uh, came from that boat. I'm going to have to go a little faster because I won't have time for, uh, to answer questions, but I'll say a couple more. This I love because um, I love the sunset here. To me, it's a west coast sunset, cloudy sky, coming in toward the end of the day with the water and the waves and the beach. Um, so that to me was um, just the classic uh, seascape, housecape uh, that came from uh, from a boat home. Uh, and uh, that's this is actually the boat that it came from. This boat was in Oak Bluffs in, in Martha's Vineyard. I took it in 2018. Uh, and it was sitting in the vineyard. So and this is a wooden boat. Some people have asked me whether wooden boats are different from fiberglass and aluminum, and they all have some markings. Uh, whalers seem to have a good amount of markings. Um, there's another one. This one I liked because it was just, it looked different and um, things you don't ordinarily see in nature. But this is the boat that it came from. Interesting name, nice bass, um, sitting on a trailer in East Falmouth. And it, uh, to me, it brought out such beautiful, beautiful, um, beautiful scene. Um, and this, again, one of one of my favorites. Uh, it reminds me of Taos, and somehow reminds me of New Mexico. Uh, and um, I, I love the, the colors and the blue. And that came from this hull that was sitting on a trailer. So if you look at the hull and you look at the scene, um, looked like you know the mountains. Um, that was that was really nice. Here's a couple of just odds and ends that were kind of um, just complex, complex design. Um, and another one, uh, this this particular boat was in the tidal area near my house, and it had about 200 images like this. And this, to me, you know, looked like like flying things and beautiful scene. And uh, one of my favorites in the patterns of, of what would be a sky here in the clouds. Uh, I love it, and maybe bushes up front here. Um, just so much beauty, and there were probably two to three hundred images like this on that particular boat. Uh, that just for the asking, all you have to do is click your shutter, and it, it's yours. Um, this one I took, and I particularly like because it looked to me like a river, like in Colorado, or a moving river in New Hampshire, and these look like rocks down here to me with the uh, skyline. So. Uh, Another underwater scene. This is a, a this is a hollow. It's not underwater. It was sitting on a trailer, but it looks like underwater growth. And here's one that looks like polar ice cap. I'm gonna go a little quicker just to get through some of these different kinds of patterns. And I like this because all this was flying around, and it looked to me like a really like a tornado coming along a beach. Uh, another one that had some interesting dimensionality to it. This is just grasses that were hanging on the side of the hull. But when you look at the water and then the light, this is the uh, sunlight reflecting off the hull. As this hull said in the water, it adds such dimensionality to it. And this is another one that's like that with 
streaks of, of light coming off the hull. Um, and uh, it's just so beautiful. Um, another one off a boat you saw earlier. This one was wild because I, I kind of thought of it like prehistoric, almost like cliffs. And I wanted to give it a name like a dinosaur or something because it was just looked like uh, wild cliffs. And, um, and this one reminded me of uh, Killington or, or a mountain in New Hampshire where you'd go skiing with a major chairlift here and snow peaks and the trees and the, and the valleys. And, and uh, so that is pretty much um, William Blake took some of this and said, um, I'm not going to read what William Blake wrote, but, you know, saying if you take a look, you know, the world is there and the beauty of the world is there and the infinite nature of the world is there. And it's always peaceful and wonderful to be outside yourself and to be able to look around and see what's out there and find beauty, there's beauty out there. Um, and it's reflected in the world that can sometimes be found, found in something very simple. So I think that that is all for the moment in terms of questions and answers. Um, go to the Maritime Museum. It's a beautiful museum. It's hands-on. It's a fun experience. And uh, you can see some of the hullscapes, but there's a lot to do in the museum. It's so much fun. Uh, and um, I'm going to bring my screen back to Mary, and she's going to be asking some questions, I think, or answering them, Mary, right? Yes. Thank you so much, Barry. It's just um, uh, remarkable. It's, it's like um, sitting on a summer day, lying in the grass in the summer day with, with small kids and asking them to see uh, say what they see in the clouds, what kinds of shapes they see in the clouds. And you really need to, I think, have that kind of childlike curiosity in, in order to find these things, you know? But it's it's just as simple as slowing down and looking at the things that you would normally ignore. Look at the things that you normally would not look at. So, really beautiful. We have um, m uh, many viewers saying, oh, thank you, wonderful. Um, let's see, uh, first question we have here. Do you prefer to photograph boats at a dock or on a mooring in order to incorporate the water into the photo? Uh, I did never intended to incorporate water in the beginning. My first 20 housecapes were really uh, on trailers. Um, and um, trailers are stable. Sometimes I could set up a tripod at a trailer. Um, uh, moorings are the toughest because the boats spin along, spin in a 360 around a mooring and they're bouncing around. They're more difficult. Uh, and uh, I need a boat to get them on the mooring as well. And that puts me at a disadvantage to be in a boat taking a picture of a moving boat. So I prefer boats at docks or boats on trailers, but I'll take a boat at a mooring if I need to. Good question. All right. Um, another one. Um, what types of photographs did you take before Hellscapes? Photographs of my family on vacation, photographs of birds in my yard. I, I, I really, truthfully, had never considered myself a photographer or I was probably the least likely person to be considered in the world of, as an artist. I still don't relate well to that term because I just take pictures. So I really just was like everybody else. I took pictures with my iPhone or I always had a camera, but I, um, in fact, I went all the way to China once uh, back in 1980 and I didn't even bring my camera because I thought it was too heavy. That's how much I was not like born a photographer. So it's only been recent. So um, mostly birds, animals, my dog, my family, my friends, my wife. By the way, I want to thank my wife, too, for her support all along and her encouragement and with Hellscape. She's really been good. Wonderful. Um, and uh, are there other ki kinds of um, objects or places other than, uh, other than boat hulls where you uh, see something kind of similar happening? Um, I sometimes in flowers, but I, you know, to tell you the truth, I don't look, uh, I, don't, I don't see them naturally like I do in hulls. In hulls, it's the hulls own me. You know, they, they call my name, they jump out at me, and the designs within them jump out at me. And, and otherwise, I, I don't see things. Uh, although I would imagine in nature, there's got to, I bet it's everywhere if you look. And I would encourage anybody to start looking closely at, at things, and, and I bet you they're everywhere. Wonderful. 
Uh, again, we have um, uh, many more comments. Well done. Uh, a couple of your cousins saying hello. <laughs> hello, cousins. And uh, someone who, who's saying, uh, will you look for moonscapes now? Moonscapes. Have you ever have you ever thought about uh, doing that type of photography? Oh my lord! You know, I think there'd be a lot if, if I would need some equipment that would get my camera stable enough and my shutter speed slow enough to capture things up to get that. If that's what you mean, to get or go to the moon, I would love to go places where there's adventure and excitement. I bring my camera and uh, you know and do it. I would love it. Uh, actually, someone has just typed back in the chat, uh, not moon escapes, more escapes, <laughs> M-O-O-R escapes. <laughs> oh, more, as in more mooring balls, maybe? Yes. So, uh, Marty O'Connell asked, yep. uh, will you look for more escapes now? Well, more escapes, maybe mooring balls. Uh, yes, the, the one with that looked like that spaceship was a more Escape. It was a mooring ball. It was the only one of all of them. The rest were boat hulls. There are a lot of good, this, this great stuff in moorings. I would encourage anybody with a camera to start looking at moorings closely, especially as the tides drop and the, the balls are a little more exposed, depending on how tight the mooring chain is. And um, I got to tell you, there's a lot of beauty in the mooring balls. And sometimes I'll have friends go out with me in my boat, and they'll say, and um, and they'll say, did you see that mooring ball? I say, yeah, well, yeah, it's beautiful, but I'm trying to stay focused on hulls. There's so many hulls. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Barry. This has been really delightful to hear uh, more about uh, hulls capes and your process and um, uh, the, the way you look at the world. Um, so uh, just a reminder to everyone, um, uh, the work by Barry it, it displayed at our museum is for sale. He has other work for sale too. So if you saw something in today's presentation that uh, is of interest to you, uh, you can contact Barry. Uh, Barry, am I right? Is it uh, hullscapes.com? Yes, yeah, dot com or dot org. It was, um, it's hull, H-U-L-L, -L, my Boston accent. By the way, quickly, I want to say thank you to my oldest childhood friend from Raleigh, Ken Zeitler, for being on this call somewhere. And uh, thank you all for being here. I'm really happy uh, that you came to listen. And uh, but the uh, Hull, Hull Scapes, H-U-L-L -L Scapes, yes.